Hey, 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 guys, and welcome to another episode of Tipsy Thursdays. I am your host, the Contact Center Whisperer, the CEO and founder of Solid Rock Consulting. And this week's Tipsy Thursdays is how would you implement a successful WFM program? What is that? Why, how, how do we go about it? And so this week we're talking to none other, huh? Than the amazing Frank Smith. Frank, thank you. So we go back. I right? was we just talking you a do. second ago, like, <laughs> is, is you're over at Google now, you're doing the things like, man, like, thank you so much for taking the time to grace me with your presence and grace the audience with your presence and all your, your knowledge and wisdom. Thank you again so much. I really appreciate it. The feeling is mutual. You know, I've respected you from afar, even when you were working with us many years ago. Uh, I just appreciated everything you've done and to kind of see your growth over the years. It's been amazing. So it's been an honor to work with you and honored to be on this platform. So, Frank, tell us when you first fell in love or stumbled upon workforce management. So for me, it started, I was working at a company called Shop at Home Network. So I was actually working part time at night. <laughs> just, you know, full of extra money. I was only 22 years old. And I have to give credit to a woman named Donna Edwards because I went to her and I said, hey, how does this actually work? You know, we talked about, you know, things such as scheduling. They always say, you got to be in your seat. You can't leave, you know. And I went back there and I asked her and I said, you know, what is workforce management about? And so she asked me a few questions and I was always curious about how call centers work, um, mainly because I could never get through. And I was wondering, why, why is nobody answering the phone? <laughs> so we talked for probably an hour and she said, hey, why don't you come back here, see if you like it. I will try you out for a week. And if everything goes well, uh, we'll go from there. Um, so I tried it for a week. She actually threw me into the fire in forecasting. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, you but, deep, yeah. deep, deep. Yes, yes. When she found out about my background and some of the things I'd done before, she said, you know what? You might be a good forecaster. And so... I pretty much went from there and I loved it because the thing about workforce management is you're always kind of striving for perfection. You mm. never actually get to a point where things are perfect, but you're always looking at how can I make things better? How can I make these shifts? How can I do these little things? There's always something that you can do better. There's always yeah. something more that you can do. And so because of that, and I guess the way that I'm wired, uh, it was almost a fit for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell me in your all your years in workforce management and all the different things, tell me um, in, in your own words. Right. There is no right or wrong answer to this question, I don't think. But how would you go about successfully implementing a WFM program? I will tell you this because I've been on both the right side and the wrong side of this. So trial and error. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing is, you know, more than anything else, the communication piece with your leadership team is critical. Understanding what are the needs, what are the wants, what are you looking for? And I will tell you just, you know, from trial and error, uh, making sure that your IT teams are involved in that conversation as mm -hmm. well, because I can't tell you the number of times we've gone through an implementation and they'll say, hey, this isn't compatible with this ACD or it's not compatible with these internal systems. You run into that quite a bit. Uh, <clears throat> so I would say more than anything, putting together a strong communication plan and putting together a strong project plan. You yeah. know, a lot of times we kind of jump into these things and it's well, let's let's try this or it's a good brand. We'll make it fit. Mm. And and then mm. a lot of a lot of centers, they end up running into those issues and it becomes, you know, filled with delays and a, a lot of other things as well. So just kind of building that strong project plan and building that strong communication and collaborative plan with your stakeholders. That's the most critical piece on it. Hey, hey, hey there, it's Juanita Coley here, and I want to personally invite you to book a WFM discovery call where we will talk through what your CX customer experience and your EX employee experience goals are for your organization and how you can obtain them by leveraging the WFM discipline. Yes, that's right. Workforce management and operations can work hand in hand together. And I want to talk to you about your goals. How can you have culture? and have it efficiently? How can you achieve customer experience without sacrificing on employee experience? That's what we're gonna be talking about. So click the link, schedule your call at wfmbuildingbridges.com and I am excited to dive deep with you. See you soon. What would you say is one of the common myths you've seen around the WFM discipline? <sighs> I think I think one people take workforce management for granted. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> I, 
they everybody do. They, calm down. Everybody calm down. Everybody yeah. calm down. Go ahead. <laughs> my, 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 my boss, my mentor, Art Price, he always said, everybody thinks they're a WFM manager. Everyone thinks they can do it. <laughs> and, and it's true. You know, they always say, well, how about if you do this? Not understanding, you know, what's that downstream impact? They don't understand necessarily what does this mean in the long run? You know, I want right. people to try to, I want people to take that 40,000 foot view, but I also want people to be able to pivot and say, what is that micro view? What does this mean for your employees, for your agents, right. for your stakeholders as well? And so you have to have all of that together. So I'd say that biggest misconception is they think anybody can do it. Uh, but more than any other discipline within the context center industry, WFM truly is an art and a science. And people need to understand both sides of that. What tip can you give us for working with um, WFM teams like operations and workforce working together? What, what are some tips you can give us or strategies? Big, biggest thing, you know, I talked about, you know, project plans, but, you know, of course, the communication piece on it. But just also kind of letting people in. Um, I've, I've seen this in a lot of organizations where operations and WFM are siloed and yeah. there's not necessarily a lot of collaborative partnership behind it. Let people in, let them see kind of how you're putting things together. You know, we, we you know, as WFM uh, practitioners, we kind of keep things close to our vest. Like, uh, you don't necessarily need to know how the sausage is made. Sometimes let them know how it's made, you know, help them understand, hey, this is what happens when we are not diligent about our adherence. We can have the best numbers, we can have the best math, we can have the best systems and software in the world. But from a people's standpoint, if our policies and the way that we actually go about our daily operations aren't in alignment, none of that matters. Come on here. Come on. Yeah, like listen, I had, we had listen. to take a little pause because I wanted them yeah, to make listen. sure that, <laughs> hey, hey. I, I, I'm trying I'm trying not to take you to church on this one, but listen. <laughs> Don't get me started. Listen, <laughs> I love the tips and the the myths that you shared around mm -hmm. successful WFM programs. Mm -hmm. Um thank you so so much. Where can the people find you if they want to reach out to you? Well, of course, you can find me on LinkedIn. So for those who worked with me in the past, I usually go by my nickname, which is JR. But you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Frank Smith Jr., uh, just as easy as ever. I'm actually a member of the project management team at Google Operations Center. So feel free to find me on there. I'm also on Instagram if you want to find me there. It is narf56. That is my first name backwards, K-N-A-R-F-5-6, on Instagram. All right. I love it. All right. I love yeah. it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming to hang out with me. You could have been anywhere and you chose to come hang out with us on Tipsy Thursday. So I appreciate it. Sounds good. Thank you so much. All right. I absolutely loved it. Listen, we could have had this conversation for forever. Okay. Yes. And Frank, Frank know his stuff. Frank know his stuff. When he's, <laughs> when he's talking about what he's talking about. So thank you so, so much for tuning in to this week's Tipsy Thursdays. If you have a topic that you want us to cover, make sure that you leave us a, a, a question or a comment in the chat, or, you know, if you shy, DM me. Okay. And we'll cover your topic on Tipsy Thursdays until next time go be great and let's make impact bye